so my grandparents grew up in this area, so there's used to be like the old west side and the new west side. So past this bridge on 52, um, that was like the old west side, and that's where my grandma grew up. So it used to be called Concord Street. So Cesar Chavez, I don't even remember when they changed the name. I was a lot younger when they changed the name, but it used to be called Concord. Uh, but a lot of business, like smaller businesses, popped up, like Boca Chica. Um, They've been in business about 53 years. So this is just kind of where my grandma and my family grew up, and it was kind of a centralized place where like a lot of Latinos were in that time. So they missed the Mexican like groceries and cooking, so they decided that they wanted to open a grocery store. And it was never, the intent was never really to have a restaurant at first, and it's kind of evolved to that now. Um, but it was supposed to just be a, a grocery store where you could find for Latinos in this area, and anywhere really in Minnesota to find a place to get the groceries for and the ingredients for the recipes that they knew, that they knew and loved and they just couldn't find it. So, yeah. My grandparents kind of, I don't think they had any idea where it was gonna go. So we started across the street there um, in between like where Lupita, where that, over that was Lupita. So it was a small area and it was just a small, um, I think it was 800 square feet, like it was tiny, and it was just grocery. Um, and then when we moved to this building about 25 years ago, um, we were just like, this didn't exist. This this next area didn't exist either. So it was just the building you probably came in in, just a grocery store. Um, and I don't think they realized how big it was gonna be. And so once my aunt started working here, who's um, one of the other owners here, she kind of had a vision for something bigger, for a sit-down restaurant, um, which happened oh, in the early 2000s, I think. And then we decided in 2016 to expand and keep going bigger. So in 2016 was when my grandparents decided to retire. Um, and they passed the business on to my aunt and my mom and myself. So, and it was just kind of like they, their vision was to, at that point was to keep it in the family and this was what they built for the family. Um, I'm the oldest of nine grandchildren. So who knows where it's gonna end up, you know, at this point. Um, I still have a lot of years left and so does my family. So I don't know. I think that for them it was, they wanted to be able to sustain a life for their family and that's why they worked so hard to make it the way it was. One of my grandparents' visions and one of the things they always said to me specifically and to our employees is that treat everyone like they're your best friend. Professor comes in the door, hey, how are you? Um, you know, if you know something about them or remember something about them, point that out. Just to kind of get, just to make a community out of every single customer that comes. If they feel welcome, that they feel like this is their home away from home to come get what they need. And that kind of transcends into the community. You know, we've been here 40 years this year, along with other businesses. So I think since we've been here so long, it's kind of an institution in our community. At the end of the day, it's become a staple of the community. So the family, the name, and just the story behind it. So it's like it's your, your typical story of like triumph. It starts off small and then, I mean, just grown, they have another location, so it's just kind of that thing. It's that, it's not so much of like, see how popular they are. Mm -hmm. It's more of like, see the progression that it's come from. It's just this, everyone always comes in and goes, oh, I remember when it's a tiny store across the street. Like, I don't remember that. Mm -hmm. oh, no, it's like, they remember that and they're still coming in. So it's like the fact that we had such a great impact from the very beginning that they're still coming back and they're still satisfied with the service that they're getting and they still feel part of the community, which at the end of the day is a, it's a re, it's like a reinforcement kind of thing for other people who want to start their own business or who want to do their own thing. Mm -hmm. It's like if this small Latino family could do it and turn it into this really big thing, what can I do? So I feel like when you see people that look like you who are successful in your community and are having like a greater impact in your community and giving back, I think that's just at the end of the day a better reinforcement of like what you can do for your community. I think people should care just because we've been here and we care about every, we care about every single employee or customer and employee that comes in. Yeah, our slogan is La Experiencia Mexicana, so the Mexican experience. So I think definitely it's making sure that they, like I said earlier, like that they feel welcome, that they feel like you're paying attention. I've had people take me around the whole store getting their ingredients with them because they want me to explain every single thing. And I don't mind that, you know? Once in a while, it's fun to get out of my office space and really interact with customers and um, help them find whatever they need. Sometimes they come in a recipe and they're like, I have no idea what I'm doing. And that's what we're here for, is to be able to show them maybe this i'm not a cook so i can't really suggest other options but i can help them find it or get someone that can help them with recipes which is like part of the fun of working here so everything that we do here is a whole experience for them so my grandparents grew up in this area so there's used to be like the old west side of the new